This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's edition of The Pit Stop. And you are now looking at a funny image, compliments of uh, Tom Cow, we call him. Tom Jones dared me to start the show with the cow image, and so I did, but now the cow image is gone. Anyway, welcome to today's edition of The Pit Stop. We're here to talk about sim racing news. Here we are, hump day, Wednesday, as I like to call Wednesdays. March 28th, and uh, a little bit going on in the world of sim racing in honor of Hump Day. I'm wearing my Hot Wheels shirt today, so just taking things a little differently. Being a little casual today, if you haven't noticed a different tempo in the show already. So what is going on in the world of sim racing? And of course, if there's anything that you want to discuss or anything that you think we should be talking about, then you guys just bring it up in the chat, and I will try to find it. One guy uh, was talking about some... Uh, some mods uh, that need to be discussed, and I don't have links, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk to him off the air and see if we can maybe add those to tomorrow's show, but this is D1RGE talking about a non-comp mod, open cart tracks, and things like that uh, that we'll hopefully talk about. I, I love talking about mods. You guys have a favorite mod, something that came out, something that you guys think that we should be covering. Again, just let me know. I want to cover anything and everything that's relevant to our group, our crowd, and that includes mods or anything. So, uh, thank you, Tom. There you go. The dare worked. You got me to put it up. So, uh, Tom Cow, everybody. Anyway, so what is going on in the world of sim racing? Number one, Gran Turismo patch. 1.15 is coming out tomorrow. 13 new cars, three GT League events, Cherry Blossom Scapes theme, GT Sport debut of... Scuba to scuba to scoop. I always say that wrong circuit. And so this is a pretty big patch. They have a little movie that I shouldn't play because they'll delete my video from YouTube for doing such criminal behavior as showing you the news. I think uh, as a media company, I'm allowed to play 10 seconds without any crime uh, being committed. But this is a big patch and a lot going on. Whoops, for Gran Turismo as they continue to make that sim, quite honestly, better and better and better. Thank you, Michael. Moo, moo! <laughs> Including one of the cars in. This is officially, now we have this from Red Bull. This uh, Red Bull prototype car is in that list of 13. So this part was actually at the Red Bull Games, not at the GT Sport talk about that patch. But we do know that is going in. So very cool news for Gran Turismo Sport fans and players. And I did have another Gran Turismo news why isn't it right there with that one we'll come back to it or i can cover it now right here uh no i don't have it here never mind we'll come back to it next up uh this is a post at f1 2000 <laughs> thank you doug f1 2017 and this is uh from red bull racing once again and they posted because 58 laps is never enough for max verstappen and i think a lot of people would probably see this and call bs and I'm not going to call BS. And the reason I say that is in my days of karting, I would literally finish a race on Saturday and be sim racing Saturday night. It didn't matter how many laps I got on the track. By the time I cooled down and rested, it was time to get back to racing for me because I love sim racing as much as I love real life racing. And I have no doubt that Max Verstappen is the same way and probably get my video pulled for playing that one through its in tire end. Thank you, Mikael. Mikael, thank you very much. I appreciate that a ton. That's really, really cool of you. You guys are awesome. You guys are truly awesome. Uh, next up, uh, I'm going to throw down a challenge. I I swear, I don't think anybody's going to beat him because we're talking about Enzo Benino. This is the Team Redline feed on Twitter, and Team Redline has Enzo Benito, one of the best drivers in the world, and he is very fast at F1 2017. So, if you want a challenge, you want to see where you stand, he turned a hot lap, a world record. You want to know what the world record sim-wise in F1 2017 at Melbourne? Well, it's a 120.225. Where do you stand on that? What can you do? Can you break into the 20s even? But if you want a good challenge, nothing to be won here other than pride, I'd like to know what were your times? How did you compare to the um, 120.25? Also, some images of the guys at Redline down at the Red Bull UK uh, launched the Red Bull Gaming Sphere. Big shock that those guys are there. What do you know? Uh, big shock that Fnatic was there. What do you know? Uh, there's Bono Hui over there. There's Enzo Benito. Um, and that is Graham Carroll. And who's this guy? 
Don't know who this guy is. Ryan something. Um, but all the red line guys were down there at that Red Bull Spear uh, opening. So, next up, new group working with Race Room, creating their own eSport. <laughs> Enzo is hysterical. John got a chance to meet Enzo, and he is one of those guys who makes you laugh without telling a joke. He's just got that kind of humor. Uh, like, Jer uh, like, like John said, another Italian, full of life. He just has that thing about him that is fun to be around and funny. Enzo's a great guy. Um, <laughs> spatial. <laughs> well played. Uh, but anyway, sim racing is going on in Malaysia. Malaysia is actually a hot pocket of sim racing, if you think about it, per capita. A lot of things go on in Malaysia in the world of racing for a very, very small country in the grand scheme of things. So, uh, anyway, but there is a full-blown eSport competition going on Malaysia, Malaysia Championship Series, and this is their eSport program that is going with Race Room, and the winner gets a full season sponsorship to race in the real MCS 2019. That's the Malaysia Championship Series. So, a uh, very cool thing going on there. If you're down in that area, you might want to check it out. Not that I'll... A ton of us are there, but again, a lot of people race out of Malaysia. Next up, just giving credit where credit is due. Ryan Lusa won the big uh, race at Auto Club Speedway, Fontana, yesterday. And he is, this guy, this kid, he's a guy, he's young. He's a young guy. You're going to hear his name for many, many years. But he beat out the rest of the great, great oval racers on the iRacing uh, side of things. Uh... This is delayed because this was them promoting it. So this was on the 27th yesterday in advance of last night's race. But we are at NASCAR.com, which is why I'm mentioning it. And and I'm this is these are great moments for us where you realize it or care or not. But they are promoting telling the NASCAR fans to go watch the iRacing Peak Antifree series. If you want to know how are we going to find more sim racers than ever before, it's through things like this. So here they are advertising not only the race itself, but the power rankings so that everybody can know more about who they're watching. Look at that. Ryan Lusa was already number one before uh, we even got things going. Next up, they didn't tease us yesterday. So they are back today with a new tease at Dakar Rally. Here's another one of those getting in the truck shots. This time a much more conventional uh, vehicle. That's a Mini. He would never recognize that as a Mini. This is the full-blown off-roading Mini, uh, which, again, how many of these parts are in common with the one that you would maybe buy? Did I see spare tires tucked right there? Is that a spare tire tucked inside of the wheel well? And another one on that side? Am I seeing things, or that's sure what it looks like to me? Um, pretty cool, pretty cool. Next up, here's the other story. This is the other uh, Gran Turismo. GT Planet. I talked to you guys. I warned you. Just shy of 52 months. That's how long the servers went. So four years would be 48 months. Four years, four months of support. Did I do my math right? 48, four months. Yeah. Four years, four months of uh, support for Gran Turismo 6 in the form of online servers. But that has officially come to an end. So we could, we could play our song. We could dress in black. We can all mourn the ending of Gran Turismo 6 which was a very fine game, and in its own way, it it actually pushed sim racing. There's no denying that. Uh, GT6 did some wonderful things. Been kind of keeping up on the Rick Most tech story as they are joining forces with Skip Barber at the New York Auto Show. They posted today, and so if you want to lay a guess, I don't know if you can win anything but pride, while setting up their booth, their neighboring booth had a crate delivered. You'll never believe what's inside. Now, I know Frank. I don't think he'd do that if he was just telling you because there was a cotton candy machine inside. I'm assuming it's something relevant or entertaining to the rest of us. So you might want to go over there and throw down your guess and see if you can uh, figure out what is in that giant crate next to Skip Barber. Uh, I'm going to thank Sean Seabrand. Uh, hopefully YouTube won't pull my video. Sean Seabran of Pro Sim TNT, who's one of our loyal patrons, one of our loyal racers in the SRS series, and a streamer of his own right, he did a video with a whole promo for our Simpit Exos Challenge, which begins 
Well, in a weird way, it kicks off tonight. It officially starts tomorrow night with racing. Um, but I want to thank Sean for doing that. And if you just want to see what's in store for next season, you can check this out. I'll add a link to this to the description of the show right now as we are talking so I don't forget. So I've added that. And if you check the description of the show, you can find the link to this video. And it's everything you need to know about what we got going on this next season in the Exos Challenge. Yesterday, yesterday I showed Thaw Man's rig. This is his beautiful modified rig. And just a little update on it, but this rig is actually a DX racer. So if you took this and started modifying it a ton uh, in various different ways, including a wheel mount, things like that. Um, but that is the rig that is underneath or, or the heart of that incredible rig that we are looking at. Yesterday, uh, completely dialed in by Ball Man, but you can see some resemblance. It is the rig. It's just he's taken it to a whole new level. So uh, just so you know, some people had asked, and that got sent in, and I figured you guys would want to know. Uh, normally, I shy away from best ofs, or I mock them. In this case, this is the best racing games on the Nintendo Switch. I think this is fairly accurate, even though they normally aren't. And the reason I say it is, I don't think there are a whole lot more racing games for the Switch. But they're talking about Fast RMX, Mario uh, Deluxe, and there are a couple of more. Uh, come on. Come on. Mantis Burn Racing, Gear Club Unlimited, which might be the most realistic, and Riptide GP, which is on just about every tablet on the face of the earth, if I'm not mistaken. Next up, I'm not going to dwell on this, Tiffin University. They're down in, uh, I believe they're in the Miami, Florida area. I know they're in, in Florida, but they are actually opening. So they're cutting the ribbon on their new eSport arena. So another college getting into the action. 4,000 square foot arena dedicated to eSport and gaming, which is quite amazing. Here's an article here talking about eSport evolving to that level of sport where you have these competitions. And the difference is legality between professional sports and let's say entertainment and one of the big things is that entertainment is owned by the companies that make the movies sport isn't owned by the sanctioning bodies these sanctioning bodies own the professional ranks of the sport but one of the things that separates the two when you can kind of think of them in the same type is that in sport, the outcome has not been predetermined. And in a movie or entertainment, it has been. And with eSport becoming pro, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some government action getting involved, clearly defining the line between what is what. And, and it might be for legal reasons in terms of who owns the rights. It might be for, you know, even just income reasons and how are you earning your money. Um... I'm only mentioning this because if any of you know me and know the Sim Pit and my theory on how I've been building this channel, I'd like to get this channel to 100, 200,000 subscribers, of course, you know, and, and produce more content. And one of the reasons I do that is I don't want to accept money from any you know, of the Sim Racing companies. I don't want to, whether it's perceived or real or not, because I'm a really, really honest guy, um... I always felt it would be better to get my advertising from outside of sim racing. And to me, these were the companies that parallel us. Automotive culture, eSport or gaming culture. Turtle Wax is getting in on the eSport stars. So they're actually starting to sponsor some streamers, some people in the world of the eSport, and showing that dual sport life. So taking a streamer and having him talk about his car and things he does. Or a streamer who has dogs. Hi, Max. And how he uses Turtle Care uh, products to deal with his dog and his car. Things like that, just a little bit. So, um, they're now drawing the same way that I'm thinking for the future of the Sim Pit as well. We talked about, I gave you the results about that Forza uh, Invitational event that went on in Seattle. Fullthrottlemedia.co.uk they have a really good write-up about how all of the rounds played out, how the whole event went on, and it's much, much, much more detailed than what I gave you 
because I just kind of cut to the chase and told you who won. So if you do have interest in uh, Forza and knowing who the best the best are and how they got there, you can go check that article out. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, now this is interesting. So Monster Energy Supercross, which just came out, they now have available DLC. And what the DLC was this uh, particular energy, Monster Energy Cup. Um, I don't know what all is included. You can get a season pass for $14.99. This is not a title that I expected DLC from, which is why I'm kind of mentioning it and talking about it. It just seems kind of odd that there'd even be DLC for something that, I mean, if it's the Monster Energy Cup, it was the Monster Supercross game. Wouldn't it come with everything I need to do that? Anyway, I haven't looked much into it, but that is available now. And if you're playing that game and enjoying it, you might want to look into their DLC. Um, okay, so here's a racer. It's called Yucatan. It's very F-Zero-ish. And I'm not playing it for the sake of... Because I think it's a great game. Viking, thank you very much. I appreciate that. It's my best part of my day, too. I, I really cherish uh, this show and doing these pit stops with you guys. A lot, a lot of fun. Really appreciate it. Anyway, the reason I'm mentioning this, and it's a great example, is this is just another one of those uh, games that's coming out. You know, whether you're calling it early access or beta, but we've really seen a change where it seems to be acceptable for a game to come out pre-final development and them to be, you know, essentially raising funds. Um, we've all been playing Wreckfest, which has been in development forever, even though it's at 40 bucks a copy, which to me seems like full fare. Um, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Is it okay for these companies to put it out before it's ready? I know that some of these companies might need, uh, money to continue development. I'm sure that's a big part of the reasoning behind it. Sometimes it could just be financial reasons and even greed. Um, but is it fair? Are we then the paying beta testers? What happened in the old days where you'd bring in a beta test group of 100 people, have them play it, shake it down, get it just right before you release it, you know? And years ago, I'd buy a game, it would come in a box, it would come with a manual, it would come with a disc, and maybe a year later, I'd get an update of some sort. But the new trend and what I saw first was this wave to games coming out and then immediately needing a patch to even be playable in some cases so they went gold they made the discs or the deals or the, the the downloadable version of the game they started charging money and as soon as you turned it on you were already met with the flaws and yet there was already a patch out well now we're one step even further into that whole evolution and now we're just talking about hey i'm going to charge you for a beta or a demo version and then we're going to keep developing it. And, and in some cases, you get the full-blown version just for having got in on the, 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 the early access. And in some cases, you don't. Um, but anyway, it's just something that I think it's another area where we're seeing a change in what we've seen and what we've always known as gamers. And if you've been gaming, we talked the other day about when did you start gaming. A lot of you guys started in the 80s and the 90s. You know what I'm talking about. This, this, what we're seeing now, this is unheard of. Um, we didn't have online distribution back then either. Um, ah, so I'm just playing this for because any of you who have the PlayStation VR, there is an update for Wipeout the game. Not one of the best driving games in the world, but there is a VR update that's coming out today. And if you want to play this game in VR, uh, you might already have it. You might already have PlayStation VR. Now you can put the two together and enjoy that. Looks pretty fun. I, I admit I'd play this. I, I would definitely enjoy playing this for a while. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to go run out and buy it, but I can't say that I wouldn't have fun doing it. That's for sure. Yeah, Dan, that's a problem. They are almost all broken. Um... Rick Hyde, great question. We're running it. Uh, Bucho, you here? Standard. Thank you. Thank you. You have my back. Thank you. Um, and speaking of the PlayStation VR, it's now on sale. I don't know if this is a huge sale or just the new price, but it's down to $299.99. So if you were looking to do some PS4 stuff in VR, the prices are dropping on the, you know, we can call them the older units. I've been playing with the Odyssey. 
Samsung Odyssey, we can call that one of the newer units. And the next gen ones are coming along, coming along more and more. So we will definitely uh, uh, be staying with the sales and the price drops on the originals. And we'll look forward to the next, uh, the arrival of the next gen. Uh, Doug Hawley is saying that Fnatic has announced their Gran Turismo Sport support. So you can dust off your PS4 and prepare to download the new patch, which should give them support. Thank you for that very much, Doug. Yeah, I'm reading what you're writing right there. So I don't have, I can go back to, uh, where'd you find this? Was this on the Fnatic blog? I was there this morning and didn't talk about it. Um, to celebrate the good news, they're giving away a CSL Elite PS4 starter kit. All you need to do is share this picture. I'm going to have to find you that picture. Doug, do you have a link for us, perhaps? I will gladly try to find it if I can get it. Let me look on my own as I try to get word. Uh, PlayStation announcement. Here it is. Uh, I was just there this morning, too, so this is just in. I mean, literally, this was posted moments ago. Uh, Club Sport Shifter and even the Club Sport Handbrake have been supported. No need to switch compatibility mode. It'll do it on its own. It's not 100% finished, so it'll be certain implementation and then more to come. And I don't see the contest part. Um, here we go. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doug. This is what I love about this show. There we go. So it's at the Facebook page for Fanatic. Share this picture and you can be eligible to win a CS4, CSL Elite PS4 starter kit. That is quite a prize. Those are decent pedals. Those are very, very decent pedals. And that's a fine wheel, especially for playing some... Uh, ps4 type stuff so thank you thank you doug thank you for being on that and bringing it to us i appreciate it next up this is interesting so one thing i want to look at and point out here is the growth of console sales over the years so when i look this is the year-end sales for the consoles themselves and you can see the ps4 is clearly outselling the uh, xbox one but look at this in 2015 they sold about 2.4 million up to 2.5 in 2016 in 2017 2.4 and now they're saying already i mean 3.4 and now they're already saying 3.39 million ps4 units have been sold in 2018 so um that that just shows you uh just how strong the console market is and when we talk about our sim racing world and how small it is, you know, 3.4 million on the console side. It's going to be hard to get that done on the PC side of things. Yeah, share it on Facebook. Share it on Facebook, you guys, that fanatic story. Uh, GTA Online just did a big update with some new things, too. Some new cool cars. You got this old school Mustang, boss looking Mustang. Um, new game modes, a bunch of new stuff. So Grand Theft Auto continues to live on and on and on with the endless amount of content that they keep creating for this title. And my hat's off to Rockstar, because I'm going to say, if you're going to give any company a pat on the back for supporting their title, it's it's Rockstar. Their, their success is very deserved with what they do and the amount of energy. And I can't even imagine the size of the team. Can you imagine how many people must work at Rockstar to create and support this title? Um... Ah, so this is a cool article, or not so cool, but AMD and NVIDIA both ran to make cryptocurrency mining cards instead of putting the burden on the gaming industry by making those cards the choice cards. And as they were doing this, well, a Chinese company went and made a cryptocurrency, their company Bitmain. They've made a very specific to mining chipset, and that actually could be a lot of sales lost for amd and nvidia and if these companies have put a lot of eggs in that basket put a lot of money into quickly developing and producing those 
cards, that could be a huge loss, which could be very bad for all of us. So as they ran for a solution, it might have come at a cost that we could see in the prices of our cards tomorrow. So that's that's too bad. Speaking of too bad, guys at Vasaro were actually staying at a hotel, had their Vasaro van out front, nice Mercedes van, with two fully loaded Sims in the back. And the van was stolen with those Sims in the back. Can you imagine the amount of money? Can you imagine the fine? Can you imagine stealing a, a, a vehicle to then find um, uh, the, the Sims in the back? So what was a terrible story has actually become a decent story because the police were able to track apparently a bunch of vans. 250 vans had been stolen and were all at one place and they were found. So Vasaro not only got their van back, but they got their Sims back. So what was a terrible story has turned good. Um, let's see, Fnatic blog we don't need. We already talked about Fnatic. Um, Rick Motek has another picture that just came up and it says, we have the blip shift guys taking their chances on Lime Rock here at the New York Auto Show. I need to talk to the guys at blip shift. Maybe we can do some shirts together or something. Maybe they'd like to advertise on the show. So, um, more stuff out of Rick Motek down there at the New York Auto Show, or I should say up there at the New York Auto Show. So that is going to do it for the regular straightforward news. What else do we have to talk about? Well, tonight kicks off our SRS series. Sure, the racing begins tomorrow night. Tonight is when I need to get up to speed and learn a few things about this car. We will need to do pit stops. I'm going to have to learn pit stops in um, Assetto Corsa. have yet to really do that and get that optimized. And no, Nutella, I don't, I don't even think they took them out of the back. I think they're literally just still in the back. Um, anyway, but tonight we will do our Attack the Track. That'll be at 6 o'clock. Daylight savings have changed in Europe now. So we should be back to the same time that we always were for our SRS. We had that three-week period where everything was too early or too late. We should be back to normal. But all of this is going on. <laughs> yeah, Viking. <laughs> too funny. Yeah, it only took 250, and it was one of the trackers of one of the other vans that led the police to the van as well. Um, so, But if you want to join us, get out there at Sim Racing Systems. Check out our series and a lot of other great series that go on. You saw Sean Seabrand, Pro Sim, TNT. You saw his promo that he did for our series. Thank you, Sean. And if you want to know where you stand, you can go to our leaderboard. You go to the Sim Pit. You look for our leaderboard banner, which I need to change to an Exos. And it shows you the lap times that everybody's already run. So we all got to put a big Pat Dennis, the big one on the back. Give him a big thank you because Dennis provides us that 24-7 server, not only for us to practice, but to be able to check up on our competition and find out exactly where we stand. See some of our regulars out here. Ricardo Mascarenas is sitting second with a 156.826. That is flying. Uh, Austin Ognoski, who doesn't run with us, but he's posted a lap time of 157.368. I see uh, Moses Choi with 157.679. Stan Donnett, Sean Seabrand, Brandon Waters, some of our regulars have all posted times. Tonight, 6 o'clock, we will be doing that, and you can tune in and see how I do in the Exos at Spa. Um, what else do... Oh, I put up the graphic and didn't show you guys everything I want to show you guys. Let's do that all again. If you go to the simpit.com, you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see our leaderboard graphic, and that'll take you to that leaderboard. Thank you, Dennis the Big One. We all need to pat him on the back, give him a big thank you. Thank you, Big E, for providing that server. And here are those lap times that I had been mentioning. Sorry, I covered that up and didn't get to uh, show you. So that really does take us to the end of the show. Last thing I'm going to do, me and the guys have been talking a lot, and we had so much fun with Wreckfest on Monday. And I don't know how many of you got a chance to see it. I don't know how many of you feel like you missed out on the action. We are going to do more with Wreckfest. It was too fun to be left alone. The guys are pushing for something as soon as next Monday. I could see us doing that if we had enough numbers. What I'd really like to do is throw all of the AI drivers out of it. So I would like to get about 20 of us. I, I, I 
actually want to take things another level with Wreckfest, but I got to see how a few things play out. If you would like to join us, I know you do, buddy. Max, you can play. It's okay. If you guys would like to join us for Wreckfest, we're thinking of doing something maybe as soon as next Wednesday. I need to get an idea how many people would play and go along. How many of you own Wreckfest? How many of you would like to do it in multiplayer? How many would like to take Wreckfest one step more seriously, even though its whole purpose and intention is not being serious? Uh, those are the questions I want to ask. No word yet on what we're going to do, so uh, hopefully I'll have more on that. But if you contact me, let me know that we're building the crowd, and then I guarantee you we will do more. What else is going on? Samsung Odyssey VR review is almost finished. I'll get that out as quick as I can. Just so many things going on. Tomorrow, I, I'm still waiting on confirmation. Tomorrow, I should have my date with the Feel VR wheel. I'll be able to get down there and try it out and see what it's all about and uh, let you guys know what it looks, feels, smells, touches, all that good stuff. Measurements people asked me about. I'll give you all the details I can possibly get. Also, in final preparation, we're talking to Emily Jones. We're going to talk to Emily Jones, the, uh, the, the, the sim racer from Down Under. She is very, very fast. I've, I've compared her lap times to some others. And she is a very fast sim racer and somebody that uh, it, I want to hear from. I want to hear how she got into it. I want to hear what it's like being a really, really good sim racer um, in, in and being a female. What is that like? Um, I'm so wrong. What was I wrong about, Spatial? Um, we talking drag racing? I'm sorry. I'm just seeing comments and want to stay with it. Odyssey is great. And Odyssey has some pros and cons. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll let you know all of that in it. Um, so, yeah. There are things that it does better than Oculus or Vive. And there are things that it does not as well as Oculus and Vive. And I'll give you my full rundown. So, um, that is going to do it. Sorry, I'm kind of rambling here at the end. Just trying to pay attention to what you guys are talking about. Join us tonight for that Attack the Track. See what that Exos at Spa is all about. Join us tonight. Get on the track and, and have some fun with us. And even better, join us for the series Thursday and Friday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I will be streaming my end as usual. And if you uh, want to get in there, just go to Sim Racing Systems and sign up for a free membership. It doesn't cost you anything. If you have a Seto course that so you got what you need, we're doing some DLC content, but a lot of it is from Race Room and Free. It won't take you a lot to get involved, and you can always find fun and see where you stand on our leaderboard. You go to that leaderboard, and you know exactly. I mean, at this point, we haven't even started the season, and we have had 244 people post times. So you know somewhere between page 1 and page 17, you fall in that range. You're going to do just fine. Get out there and race with us. Have a good time. So that's going to do it for Hump Day, Wednesday, March 28th. Get out there, do some racing, have a good time, and I hope you enjoyed the show. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.